Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows, and surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bites. Good morning. It's Wednesday. The conversations about Togbia Feather, whether he took um, the money back, whether he is grandstanding, whether he's trying to be populist, whether he's trying to be uh, a snitch, whether he's trying to be an opportunist, uh, an opportunist, whatever it is, has taken over all the conversations. But thanks to Togbia Feather, we know that silently and quietly, we, of course, I knew that ex Gracia will come at some point. I knew that after election 2020, the next thing was to have a committee, an emoluments committee that would have made a proposal to the president and ex Gracia would have been paid anyway. We knew that it was going to happen. What we did not know was when the monies were paid. And thanks to Togwe Apede, now we know that Bubu Mefia, thank you very much, Todia. We now know that monies have been paid. So this morning, I'm asking a simple question. Oliver, put it up there. What are our leaders sacrificing? They ask us to sacrifice. I'll show you. Then he pulled uh, Honorable Kandapes, um, the, the extract from 3news.com. We are told to sacrifice. The president said the same thing, that we need to sacrifice. I remember when the E-Levy debate started. He says E-Levy will be a sacrifice Ghanaians can make to support national development. Honorable Kandapa, he's a minister for national security. He is a beneficiary of ex Gracia. He is a beneficiary of ex Gracia as a minister. So between 2017 and 2020, the work he did as a national security minister, he will get ex Gracia for it. Whatever work he's doing from 2021 to 2024, he will get ex Gracia again. So technically what it means is that they retire after every four years. They get their pension and all the benefits and they come back to come and start work again. Technically that's what it means from president to all the big people. And I'll tell you what, even for those who run our state-owned enterprises that are running losses, and we continue to pay them. Can you imagine that if I'm an IGP or a former chief justice, I have retired on my salary, I've drawn from the consolidated funds for long, then I'm invited to be on the Council of State and I join, and I still am getting money. Can we have at, at some point where we're asking everybody else to sacrifice? Can we have our old people also who have chopped Ghana's money in the military? They sing a certain song. They say, <clears throat> Ghana money, Ghana money. Plenty of people chop, they run away. Ghana money, Ghana money. Plenty of people chop, they run away. Akufado chop is still they chop. John Mahama chop is still they chop. Kufo chop is still they chop. And, and, and they, they, they have chop, 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 chop. And they are still chopping. And they're asking the young people to sacrifice. Can we not have a situation where our older generation after retirement, for example, having drawn from the consolidated funds, having retired on those juicy stuff, would say, I want to work for Ghana for free. Never mind what the constitution says. Or we will, while we are there, like the Council of State now has done, to get a whole act to govern the activities of the Council of State, would now say that, look, let's take a look at this Article 71, and the, this animal called Article 71, and fix it. This morning, I'm asking, what are our leaders sacrificing? Today is the 8th of June. No, no, be so. We were told that in the month of May, or at the end of the month of May, we will make a deduction of 30% of the salaries of members of the executive to cushion all of us. That's what they told us, right? The Council of State said they were volunteering 20% of whatever they earn. And I did a little calculus. I said, if you like, put together whatever the Council of State is earning, the 28,000, 27,000, 26,000, put all of it together. After all these years, the S gratia they get is bigger than what they had combined. So if they dash you 20% of it and they come back to come and take a bigger chunk, what have they done? I give you one, I give you two, Ajana one, Ajana two. We are told that the executive have deducted monies from their, their salaries. That's fair enough. It's a directive I saw. Beautiful initiative. Where is the money going? 
Because you cannot tell me that you are deducting monies, for example, and you are, you are making sure that it's going to ameliorate the suffering of the people, eh? and you're not telling me where the money is going. You're only telling me that it's going to be in the consolidated funds. So it's like a drop in the ocean. We can't track and trace the money. Should an honest government not be telling us at this point that, oh, at the end of the month of May, because today is 8 June, at the end of the month of May, this is how much we deducted from every single person, and this is how much money we have been able to save, and this is what we are going to use it for. Should we not be able to do that? Our children in the schools, we are teaching them to fast by force. Because we can't pay school feeding teachers. We are teaching the children to fast. Children, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, we are teaching them, we are forcing them to fast. While the elders feed, what are our leaders sacrificing? We are forcing the children to fast. Then they pull the extract from the, um, uh, the, the Howard's book for me. We can't proudly feed our children. Proudly, we cannot feed our children. Proudly. Our NAPCO beneficiaries are walking about hungry. Proudly, our national service people, we delaying pay. The one we pay one day, we come and shout, hey, April uh, allowances pay. Hey, June allowances pay. We go and shout. They put it on Facebook shamelessly. What are our leaders sacrificing? Because you cannot tell me that you have cut your salary by 30% and then you move your meetings outside your, your jurisdiction. So you, you work in a crowd, then you move it to Kumasi, then you take full allowance, then you take per diem. So what you are losing here, you are collecting here. You can't do, you can't do that kwani kwani with us. Then you look for the, the uh, Nana Blue song, Edwin Derriam. We'll play it, uh, Bob Cole's song, we'll play it. Now, <clears throat> this, was a, this is in page 115 of a yet to be launched book. 14th of June. It says, Mr. Tuahoy, he had two very fond memories of Commonwealth Hall. First, students enjoyed three free meals a day. Three free meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, supper. University. And this was when the old system was working. So you go to uh, primary school, you get into standard seven, you go to middle school, then you go to secondary school, then you go to uh, uh, lower six, then you go to upper six, you do O and A level, then you go and do national service, finish camp, go to the university. After all this while, while you have even been able to work, you are an able-bodied man, a woman, you're able to take care of yourself. You are fed at the university, breakfast, lunch, and supper. Guess what? With a sumptuous snack in between lunch and dinner at 4 p.m. The people who today cannot feed our children at that same time says second, once a week on Wednesdays, like today, if it was back in the day today, they will be preparing for a formal dinner at which the best of foods was served and students had to wear a formal hall gown, popularly known by the students as Aka Pompo, the abbreviation for academic pomposity. So apart from breakfast, lunch, supper every day with a snack at 4 p.m., they were also going to get or they also got Dinner, buffet. Today, we can't even feed our children, and we are shamefully giving 97 pesos to caterers to feed. How cruel are we? Same people who enjoy these goodies. Same people are in power. Same people have been in power since 1992. And children lie on their belly to learn. And Article 71 holders is there. MPs will take it, and that is where you don't see them fighting. NDC, NPP, MPs will agree, they will collect it. They will actually tell you they can't take anything less than this. Ministers will collect it. Everybody else who's qualified will collect it. What are we sacrificing? Yet we are pressing the people. Put that infographic for me. So what Tobia Feder returned, okay? What he returned, and I, I, I see a certain kind of, um, so I say jocular defense to say, oh, the, the, the king is being hypocritical. I see a certain jocular attempt at it. Because, you see, we are the ones who are happy to say, oh, the ministers and the uh, 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 leaders of our state institutions are cutting 30% of their salary. We can't even show where the money is going. But somebody who says, look, I think that this one, at this point, we don't need it. We say, hey. He's been a hypocrite. 
Were we not in this country when we were told that we will not buy new vehicles? And President Akufado, when he was sworn in, he said he was going to use vehicles from 2007. Ghana 50. Go and check the number of vehicles we have bought, the new ones. Go and check. And go and check. There's not even a vehicle, a VA that carries a chair around. Go and check. Members of this government refuse lunch at the, at the transition table. Lunch and snacks. They said, we don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want to have anything to do with it. Today, the lunch, when you see the lunch, you run away. The lunch will scare you. And then I'm mirroring that against our children in the basic schools. That can't even feed. And they have been <clears throat> on, on strike since middle of May or so. Today is the 8th of June. We have not breathed a word. And you know what the surprising thing is? Lawyer Adua Sako, who is our Minister for Gender, Children, and Social Protection, we are entering our third year, and she will be qualified to collect ex gratia, both as an, a member of parliament and as a minister of state. For no work done. We know they see that one. We they see talk being on. Hypocrisy. Motromojo. Hmm. So we need to <clears throat> decide as a country what we want to do. Are we able to say that? Because when you have an elder at home, you have an elder at home who has benefited from the, the goodies of the home, when they become family elders or they become head of family, they don't ask for the family and the young children to pay them. How is it that we have had people who have enjoyed scholarship, people who have gone to school for free in this country, people who have enjoyed breakfast, lunch, supper, plus snack, people who have retired on their salaries and gotten their pension, people who have benefited from everything, and the same set of people regroup and come and collect S. Gratia from us. And then we tell the young people, that sacrifice, you have to sacrifice. You have to be patriotic. Can I be patriotic on an empty stomach? Who can be patriotic on an empty stomach? Then he look for the, the, the thing. Nah, this, is how, this is how we serve the children. There's no, even, there's no dignity in serving the children. Sometimes they sit under trees on the floor. Then he take it back. Let me see the children on the floor. Let them see it. The children on the floor, they sit on the floor. They sit on the floor, on the floor, to eat. Their children are not in the schools that they provide the shambolic meals for. And then they will come and put it in a report and say, oh, we have fed X number of children. And they always make it look as if, oh, we have fed X number of children. When you say, then they tell you, oh, the exchange rate, uh, and they tell you oh, it's a global, blah, blah, blah. Were we not in this country, then they come back to the studio, were we not in this country when we inaugurated a committee to investigate the depreciation of the city? We did the 40-member committee. Look at their faces. The 40-member committee that was supposed to investigate why our city continued to fall. These are our people. These are the men. We have the men. The city is falling. Today, dollar is more than eight cities. Pound is almost 10 cities. Euro has broken the eight. Dollar has broken the eight. Pound is aiming for 10. And we know that the, the value of our CD must be strong enough for us to achieve some of these things. We are not addressing these things. We are busy collecting money and chopping. Nyafu, nyafu, basa, basa, chaka, chaka. And we are telling the young people to sacrifice. I'm asking this morning, as an, as an elder statesman, I'm asking this morning, as a big man, as a member of parliament, as a minister of state, as a head of a state institution, as a government official, and guess what? The presidency is expanding because we are adding more numbers. Ex gratia, we are padding it for a country that does not have money. We were all told how things were difficult, and 2020 devastated everything, and we don't have anything. Ghana is broke. Ghana is in a bad place. We are not getting a budget, blah, 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 blah. Sana, they were preparing ex gratia for themselves to chop. So you are telling the people to sacrifice, but what are you sacrificing? Can you look yourself in the mirror to say, I'm sacrificing for Ghana? That worker at parks and gardens, who has been sent to come and mow your garden or your lawn in your home, and has been bitten by a scorpion or whatever it is, are you sacrificing more than that person? That janitor at the ministry, 
who smells all manner of things, are you sacrificing more than that person? That teacher who's had to use a canoe to cross a river this morning to go and teach children, are you sacrificing more than that teacher? That nurse or trainee nurse who has not been paid a nursing training allowance that you promised, and yet they are, they are, they are, they are, being, they, they are working, are you sacrificing more than them? School feeding program, look at it. And he showed the picture. We are wrapping up. This is it. This is how we feed our children without dignity. Without dignity. And yet we collect big, big, big ex gratia. They are all guilty. They are all guilty, all of them. None of them. They are all guilty. And this is where they need to sit up and look and say, look, we have not been truthful and faithful and we have not shown our people a lot of respect and dignity. When you mount the political party campaign platform to say, I'm sacrificing for you, I want to sacrifice for you, what exactly do you mean when you say you are sacrificing? What are you sacrificing? What exactly do you mean when you say you are sacrificing? What are you sacrificing? You have bodyguards. Yet the people have no bodyguards. And on top of it, you send hoodlums in, in, in military and uh, uniforms with guns to go and hit them. What are you sacrificing? We need to be very careful. We need to be very careful. There is money. But the money is with just a few. The money is not spreading out. And that is a bad thing. That is evil. That is bad. That is evil. If I work as a teacher and I've worked for 30 years and my pension, my lump sum, okay, there's no lump sum these days, but my pension is not for all the years of sacrifice with all the transfers. Sometimes I'm being told you won't get chalk. Sometimes I don't have textbooks. Sometimes I don't have whatever it is, the teacher and learning materials. And my pension is 20, 25, maybe 50 times lower or 80% lower than somebody who just suddenly got into politics, did four years, and has all of that to take away, I will rethink. That's why everybody is leaving the classroom to go to parliament. Go to parliament. Go and check the numbers of teachers we have in parliament. Go on to parliament's website. Look for the MPs and check. Most of them are teachers who have run away from the classroom and they have gone to join politics because they have seen where it is. Because the president has told us that if you want to be rich, teaching is not the avenue. The president himself was a teacher once upon a time at Accra Academy. He was an economics teacher. Why did he stop? Nurses, doctors. We need to be careful. We need to be very careful. And he played the song, Let's Go. Good morning. <laughs>